أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته الخائنون ولا يحسين ماءه العادون ولا يؤد حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الحمم ولا يناله غوص الفتن الذي ليس لسيسته حد محدود ولا نات موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا عجل ممدود فترى القلائق بخدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته اللهم عف السلة سلواتك وسلامة تسليماتك على عوضل التعينات المفازة من العماء رباني وآخر التنزلات المزافة إلى نوع الإنساني كان الله ولم يكن معه شيء إنساني محسي لعوالم حذرات القامس بوجوده وكل شيء أحسيناه في إمام المبين ما صلى على محمد وآله الرسول النبي المكي الخرشي المدني التحامي صاحب اللواء الحمد ومقام المحمود عبد الخاصم محمد الحميد وعلى أخيه وابن عمه وسهره وخليفته من بعده وقائد الغر المحجلين يا سب الدين إمام المتقين أمير المؤمنين علي بن عبي طالب اللهم صل على محمد وعلى وعلى ابنته الطاهرة الحوراء العنسية الراضية المرضية الشفية يوم الجزاء فاطمة الزهراء سلام الله عليها وعلى ستي رحمة وسيدي شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين اللهم صل على عمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد وحسن بن علي وحجة القائم المنتظر المحدي صل على محمد حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك اللهم سح المنحجهم وعجل في فرجهم وجعلنا من محبيهم ومواليهم وشيعتهم ولعنة الله على عدائهم أجمعين من يومنا حذا إلى قيام يوم الدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم السيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون I begin in the name of Allah the most beneficent and most merciful we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings in this holy month the tawfiq in this holy month which is aspiring us to attain the virtue of taqwa, which is aspiring us to attain the quality of taqwa, which is the only source of deliverance from the fire of hell, which is the only criteria with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judge us as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna akramakum, inda Allahi atqaakum. The most honored and the most noble amongst you are the ones who are the most god worrying the discussion that we have been uh, talking about is the importance of taqwa and trying to attain taqwa and we spoke about muttaqin the god weary and what are the things that they do not do and we said muttaqin are the ones who ensure that in three fronts of their lives they prevent themselves from things that would trespass the boundaries of Islam and they do those things which Allah loves 
the things that Allah want them to do. What are those three things? One is belief, their aqaid, and the second one is their akhlaq, their behavior, and the third thing is their amal, their actions. Muttaqeen are very, very conscious about these three aspects of their life. Their belief, their aqaid, their akhlaq, and their amal. This is what uh, makes a person truly a muttaqi. Yesterday we talked about how uh, taqwa, uh, what are the things that we should not be doing. And um, we shared some of the verses of Holy Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in fact in this Hakim Luqman uh, advises his children, Ya Bunaya la tushrik billah. Oh my children, do not ascribe a partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a mutaqi is one that would never engage himself in shirk. Any form of shirk, whether that shirk is apparent, which is zahir, or that shirk is batin, which is hidden. And then, wala uh, taksurun, and do not be ungrateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you are going to remember me, I am going to remember you and do not be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then another verse of Holy Quran which we talked about in which Allah says that surely Allah does not like the transgressors. La yuhibbul mu'tadeen. Allah does not like those who transgress or cross the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So muttaqeen are those who do not cross the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then in akhlaq we also shared with you the verses of Surah Hujarat in which the etiquette with which muttaqeen address in the gathering where the Prophet of Allah is present that they do not dare to raise their voice in front of the Messenger of Allah. Ya amanu la aswatakum nabi. That, O oh believers, do not raise your voice in the company of the Prophet to be higher than that of the Prophet of Allah. And then uh, the details. But the point, my dear brothers and sisters, is taqwa is comprises of a list of don'ts and a list of do's. There are a list of do's and don'ts. Generally we say do's and uh, don'ts. But in ilm e akhlaq in the, in the science of ethics, one thing that is recommended is first to clean the container in which you are going to pour something which you do not want it to be rotten. If you want to preserve something, the first thing you need to do is ensure that you clean the container. So we have to clean the container of our soul by ensuring that we do not do what Allah does not like. And then embark on a journey in which uh, we ensure we do everything that Allah likes. Please say Allah. 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 So, we find in Quran in various places, Allah clearly, without any doubt, very clear verses of Quran saying what Allah loves. Allah says, Allah loves those who are muhsineen, those who are virtuous, those who perform virtuous, uh, virtuous acts. Allah says that Allah loves tawabin, Allah loves those who are penitent. Allah loves those who uh, seek Allah's forgiveness, who uh, submit themselves to Allah and ask for Allah's forgiveness for their past actions. Allah loves mutatahirin, those who keep themselves clean, whether they're inside or they're outside. Islam is a... So now we find ourselves with all these um, attributes. Um, there are about 10 to 11 verses. I don't know if I would be able to cover all of them today. So I'm thinking of maybe I would sh start with how Allah loves those who are just. How does um, Allah love those who are just? In Surah Maida, verse 42, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Samma'una lil kizbe akaluna lis the eavesdropper, the ones who are listeners, these are the listeners who come with an aim of telling lies. They come and they listen and then they want to quote us wrong. 
they are liars they come and these are the people who are the eaters of unlawful they are not only giving misinformation they are not only providing misinformation they are not only creating misinformation in society by spreading lies in society they also eat unlawful what is haram they eat but when they come to you how should you interact i'm missing the middle part of the verse but i'm coming to a point where it says wa in hakamta fahkum bainahum bil khist if you have to judge these people those people who spread lies in society those people who eat haram but if they come to you and they ask you for justice to judge then make sure that you judge them justly you do not take sides you uphold the justice inna allah yuhibbul muqsitin indeed allah loves those who are just my dear brothers and sisters if we want to be amongst those who are muttaqin we have to uphold justice even with those who are unjust this is how strongly islam feels about justice this is how strongly islam recommends justice and a person cannot be a muttaqi if he doesn't love justice because allah says in allah yuhibbul muqsitin allah loves those who are just we have to have a, that attribute of upholding justice even if it goes against us this is how much islam cares about justice now look at just societies societies so called just societies when they call themselves for justice how do they deal and how do they take sides and how do they have double standards we find it in our own society that the kind of double standards that are going on in the criminal justice system in our own society we find that if a person of a certain race is there for in in the case how he is dealt as compared to a first person of a different race in the most advanced society of the world which claims that we are the the upholders of justice on our currency we have in god we trust we also trust in god and yet we see justice is trampled left and right and and we call ourselves the just whereas when it comes to islam we find islam is saying those who spread lies against you those who eat haram but if they comes to you to be the judge make sure that you uphold justice because islam believes in moral values which are absolute they are not relative they are not going to change by people changing or by time changing please say salawat wa in ta'ifatan min al mu'minin this is another verse hujarat verse 9 wa in ta'ifatan min al mu'minin اختتلوا فاصلحوا بينهما if two groups of the faithful from the mu'minin if they fight one another make peace between them try to establish peace between them you do not put more fuel to the fire believers do not put more fuel to the fire if there is a disagreement if there is a fight if there is uh, if mu'minin are engaged into a dispute believers are supposed to put off the fire and resolve the issue not put fire into or put fuel into the fire and the verse continues but i am taking again the uh, the later half of the uh, verse in which allah subhanahu wa taala says fa aslahu bainahuma bil adl wa aqsatu try to make peace between them with fair make peace fairly with justice establish justice don't take sides don't be biased when the believers come to you and they are fighting then you come and you intervene to resolve that dispute 
and how should you resolve that dispute with justice and fairness why inna allah yuhibbu almuqsitin because allah loves those who are just so the quality of a muttaqi should be that he loves justice he not only loves justice he actualizes justice in his life he ensures justice prevails in society he ensures that wherever he stands justice is the position that he takes he does not take sides of his friends he does not take sides of his well wishers he does not take sides of his family he takes only the side of justice because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna allah yuhibbul muqsitin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are just so the quality of muttaqi in the light of holy quran a muttaqi preserves justice if a person is muttaqi and he is in society one of the tasks that is assigned to him being a muttaqi is that he upholds justice and preserves justice please say the salawat now we have talked about mu'minin how we should be dealing with mu'minin we have also talked about those who are sinners who eat unlawful things and who spread lies we should deal with them also with justice now another category that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is um, about mushrikeen how should you uh, be dealing with mushrikeen la tanhaakum allah an alladhina lam yuqatilukum fi ad-deen Allah does not forbid you in regard to those who did not make war against you against us on uh, on account of our religion if they don't make war against you on account of your religion walam yakhrijukum min diyarikum and they did not expel you from your homes an tabarruhum wa tuhsitu ilayhim then what should you do with people who are not believers and they did not engage in war with you on account of your religion nor did they expel you from your homes then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you should deal with them with kindness and justice you should deal with them with kindness and justice those who do not wage war against you on account of your on account of your religion and those who do not expel you from your homes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying deal with them with kindness and justice uphold justice with them do not be biased with them do not have prejudice with them do not hate them because they are not from your religion be respectful to them be kind to them be just to them these are the verses direct verses of quran that i am reciting in front of you my dear brothers and sisters in allah yuhibbul muqsitin again allah says allah loves those who are just so justice has to be not only upholded amongst the believers but justice has to be upholded among those who spread lies against you those who are engaged in consuming haram even for them you should be just if you are on the side of allah subhanahu wa taala and if they are not fighting with you on behalf of your religion it also shows this all this verse also shows how important your religion is how important your religion should be that if they don't fight with you on account of your religion and if they don't expel you from your home be kind to them and be just to them and this is a universal human value my dear brothers and sisters that allah has created all of us free and allah has given us all the opportunity to embark on a journey of belief in whichever direction we want to but if somebody fights us on behalf of that 
obviously there is an exception please say the salwa yesterday i was uh, looking at a television uh, show they were comparing uh, two uh, sets of people uh, which have been given uh, the kind of justice they have been given uh, a woman uh, who felt threatened a black woman who felt threatened and uh, with uh, with a man and she fires in air and the bullet goes in in the ceiling and, and the man leaves and that woman gets 20 years of prison and then the trevan what's his name trevan uh, yeah this guy goes provokes instigates a fight already in touch with police the police has already told him that don't go near him he goes and provokes him and shoots him and gets free this is the justice this is a very you know it is really shaking the core of the founding fathers of this nation who have built this nation on the basis of justice and democracy if you read their biography if you read lincoln's biography you would be amazed the, the kind of convictions this person had and how he wanted to establish justice in society whereas how we are finding uh, justice in society these days we find there are double standards these double standards have no place in islam and how an islam is is promoted or or the islamophobic mentality introduced in society that a sharia law comes and everybody is going to be killed and everybody is going to be given this and that these are all the fears being introduced into the hearts and minds of people so they do not accept islam as their way of life because if they look upon the verses of holy quran directly the verses of holy quran they will submit their will because the will that they have is based upon fitra which is given to us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our fitra would submit us towards islam please say the salawat so upholding justice my dear brothers and sisters is is very very important attribute for a muttaqi regardless a muttaqi would ensure justice is upheld now in uh, other um, verses of the holy quran muhsinin um, allah loves muhsinin wa anfiqu fi sabilillah spend in the way of allah ولا تلخو بأيديكم إلى التحلك، and do not cast yourself with your own hands into destruction. وأحسن and act virtuously. إن الله يحب المحسنين. Indeed, Allah loves those who are virtuous. So a muttaqi is a person who is striving for what Allah loves, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying in this verse of Surah Baqarah, verse 195, that anfehu, give in the way of Allah, be charitable, charitable, spend in the way of Allah, do not take yourself towards destruction through your actions, and perform virtuous acts. because allah loves those who are virtuous so the quality of muttaqi is that he spends in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala and he protects himself from destruction and acts virtuously why because allah loves those who are virtuous please say the salawat inshallah we will uh, continue uh, the discussion uh, on, on the same topic uh, it is very very mind boggling how quran had been crystal clear about the values that it wants a believer to uphold and a believer is a mu'min who has attained the attribute of taqwa aaj shab e juma hai shab e juma ki munasibat se aur حضرت خدیجہ کبرا 
ام المؤمنین کی وفات کی مناسبت سے بھی کہ جو آپ جانتے ہیں ان کی وفات انہی ایام میں انجام پائی تھی چند آسو اہل بیت کے غم میں لیکن اس سے پہلے جنہوں نے اسلام کے لیے اپنے آپ کو نثار کر دیا جنہوں نے اسلام کے لیے اپنے آپ کو مٹا دیا جنہوں نے اسلام کے لیے اپنے اہل و عیال کو اپنے مال کو سب کو قربان کر دیا اگر اس کی فہرست تیار کی جائے گی تو ختیجہ کا نام سب سے پہلے آئے گا ان کا ایثار اور ان کا یقین پیغمبر پر اور ان کا اعتماد پیغمبر پر جبکہ تمام عرب کے افراد پیغمبر پر تہمتیں کس رہے تھے یہ ختیجہ تھی جس نے تسلیم کیا تھا اور اسلام کو قبول کیا تھا آج بھی کہا جاتا ہے کہ آپ تمام افراد کو خانے کر سکتے ہیں لیکن اپنی زوجہ کو خانے کرنا اس کے لیے ہنر چاہیے بہائن ایوری سکسیسفل مین سٹینڈز اے وومن ٹیلنگ ہم دیٹ ہی از رونگ یعنی یہ سب سے بڑا چیلنج یعنی انسان اپنے زواہر کو کچھ دیر کے لیے باہر تو محفوظ کر لے سکتا ہے تاکہ لوگ اس کے باطن کو نہیں پہچان سکیں لیکن جو گھر والا ہوتا ہے واقعاً وہ ان این آؤٹ جانتا ہے اور پیغمبر کو اگر کوئی پہچانتا تھا تو وہ حضرت ختیجہ تھی اور انہوں نے اپنے پورے اختیار کے ساتھ اور اپنے پورے تمایل کے ساتھ یتیم عبداللہ کو خبول کیا اپنے نکاح میں اور پیغمبر سے آپ کا عقد ہوا اور آپ جانتے ہیں اسلام کی کوششوں میں جو پیسہ جو لگا ہے اس میں بھی حضرت ختیجہ کا کتنا سہم ہے لیکن اور ایک اور بات جو پیغمبر کی بہت خصوصی ہے حضرت ختیجہ کے ساتھ آپ دیکھتے ہیں کہ جب تک حضرت ختیجہ زندہ تھی پیغمبر نے دوسرا عقد نہیں کیا پچیس سال تک پیغمبر نے دوسرا عقد نہیں کیا حضرت ختیجہ کو پیغمبر اتنا چاہتے تھے کہ ان کی ازواج تاریخ اس بات کی شاہد ہے تانے کستی تھی یہاں تک کہ تانے کسے جاتے تھے پیغمبر پیغمبر کیا کرتے تھے حتیٰ تاریخ اس بات کی شاہد ہے کہ پیغمبر حضرت ختیجہ کے انتخال کے سالہ سال بعد بھی جب گھر میں کوئی اچھا کھانا بنتا تو حضرت ختیجہ کی سہلیوں کے پاس بھی جاتے ہیں اگر خربانی ہوتی اگر بکھرا کٹا جاتا تو حضرت ختیجہ کی سہلیوں کے پاس گوش بٹتا پیغمبر حضرت ختیجہ کو یاد بھی کرتے تھے اور جو حضرت ختیجہ کے دوست تھے انہیں بھی پیغمبر نے حضرت ختیجہ کے انتخال کے بعد فراموش نہیں کیا تھا اس کے بعد بھی پیغمبر ان کا خیال رکھتے تھے آپ سب جانتے ہیں کہ کس بے کسی کے عالم میں شیب ابی طالب میں مسلمان کس مشکلات سے دو چار تھے کہ جہاں پر ختیجہ اس دنیا سے گزر گئی کیا ان کی غزہ تھی کیا ان کا سونا تھا کیا ان کا بچھونا تھا سوشل بائیکوٹ سوسائیٹی نے مسلمانوں کا کیا ہوا تھا پیغمبر کا کیا ہوا تھا ایک فرنٹ پر ابو طالب جہاد کر رہے تھے ایک فرنٹ پر ختیجہ جہاد کر رہی تھی اور پیغمبر نے ان دونوں افراد کو ایک ہی سال میں کھو دیا اور اس سال کو سال حزن قرار دیا اس سال کے جس میں پیغمبر اور مسلمان بہت غم زیادہ تھے لیکن حضرت ختیجہ کا جب انتخال ہوا ہے تو یقیناً مجھے یقین ہے کہ پیغمبر کو تسلی دینے کے لیے لوگ تشریف فرما تھے پیغمبر کو پرسا دینے کے لیے لوگ تشریف فرما تھے لوگ دھارس دلا رہے تھے نہیں نہیں پیغمبر ہی نہیں بلکہ ختیجہ کی صاحبزادی فاطمہ کو بھی دھارس دینے کے لیے لوگ آ گئے ہوں گے خود بابا زندہ تھے بابا دھارس دے رہے تھے فاطمہ کو فاطمہ تمہاری ماں گزر گئی ہے فاطمہ لیکن تمہارا بابا زندہ 
زندہ ہے نبی اللہ زندہ ہے فاطمہ تم گھبرانا نہیں میں ہاتھ جوڑ کر پیغمبر سے کہوں گا شہزادی سے عرض کروں گا کہ شہزادی آپ جب یتیم ہو رہی تھی آپ کے سر سے آپ کی ماں کا سایہ جب اٹھ رہا تھا تو لوگ دھارز دینے کے لیے موجود تھے پیغمبر موجود تھے لیکن آپ ہی کی پوٹی جب سکینہ کو یتیمی سہنا پڑ رہا تھا تو حسین کربلا میں سکینہ کو تسلی دے کر مختل کی طرف تو گئے تھے لیکن جب شام غریبہ آئی ہے تو سکینہ نے یتیمی کا استقبال کیسے کیا کوئی تماشے لگا رہا ہے کوئی کانوں کے گوشوارے چھین رہا ہے کوئی دامن میں آگ لگا رہا ہے اور سکینہ خیام تو جل چکے تھے مختل کی طرف آ کر ندا دے رہی ہے بابا کہاں ہو چچا جان کہاں ہو علیم نے ابھی طالب کو صدا دے رہی ہے اے میرے دادا مدد کو آئیے سکینہ یتیم ہو گئی سیالم اللذین ظلم ایم انقلب انقلب انہا لیلہ و انہا الیہ راجعون بار الہا تو اس ہماری خلیل ازاداری کو خبول فرما ہمیں کوئی غم نہ ہو سوائے غم حسین کے جملہ مومین و مومنات کے حاجات کو برلا جو مخروض ہیں ان کے خرضوں کو ادا فرما جو بیمار ہے بحق بیمار کربلا شفا عنایت فرما جو جہاں جہاں پر مومنین و مومنات بستے ہیں ان کی جان و مال و عبرو کی حفاظت فرما تاجیل فرما ظہور خائم آل محمد میں ہم سب کو ان کے ناصروں میں شمار فرما ایک سور فاتحہ تمام مومنین کی ارواح کے لیے اور خصوصاً آج کے پروگرام کے جو سپانسرز ہیں ان کے مرہومین کی ارواح کے لیے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الرحمن الرحیم